Just before I get to Jason Felinski, Anne from Palm Beach can tell us about the closure of some of these testing centres. You have uh, detected a closure somewhere up there, Anne, have you? Oh, yes. Look, uh, for the entire year we've had a testing centre in the car park at Avalon yep. and also another testing centre in the car park at Newport. Yep. Now, within the last week, both of these have been closed. They've disappeared, and the only testing site we have in this area now is Monavale Hospital, and the traffic jams down there are horrific. My cousin waited three hours yesterday to get a test, uh, so I'd just like you to inquire from maybe from Jason or from the Department of Health why those two sites have been closed. Well, um, how about we do that right now? Anne, stay there. I've got Jason Felinski, the member for McKellar on Sydney's Northern Beaches, on the line right now. Jason, good morning. So, Chris, I prefer answering questions from you. Anne's are far too hard. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> At but least Anne, you're yeah. honest. <laughs> but, Anne, uh, thank you for putting me on the spot. The answer to your question, I believe, is that, that those sites were actually um, provided by council and council over the last month or so has been informing health that they wanted those sites returned for parking, et cetera, with summer coming up. So health has moved um, some of the testing sites to Motorvale Hospital. I thought there was another site that had been opened as well, but um, let me find that out for you, Chris, and I'll, I'll come back. To the you. demand for getting tests, and probably due to the requirements to get into Queensland, has never been higher. Like, it's really strong demand out there, long lines, etc. Someone has to extend the hours of these state testing centres, surely. Start them <laughs> earlier in the morning, finishing them at, at midnight. Surely we've got enough workers to be able to fill those positions to get people tested. So we can and we should, um, but of course at the back end the other problem is the labs are now completely overrun yeah. with tests they have to do. So um, the one down the road from me at Cromer and um, you know, a couple of times when I went to Canberra, the ACT government was um, expecting us to get tests 24 hours before we left. I would be able to go down at 8 o'clock in the morning, go straight in, and I would have my test results by 10 o'clock. Mm. There is a line for the Chroma Centre at the moment that goes back nearly five kilometres. Wow. And that's not the fault of the people doing the tests. That's not the fault of the New South Wales government, who simply, who've actually increased bandwidth over the last couple of weeks. It is, and it's not just Queensland as well, it's Queensland, it's WA, it's Tasmania, who are expecting these tests from Australians trying to stra travel within Australia. Australia, and that's what's slamming the system at the moment. Sharon, one of our listeners, has just said Avalon has a new testing location at Kareel Bay playing right. fields. Yeah. This is a new yeah. Laverty site. Yes, that's okay. correct. All right. Yeah. I want to talk about the voices of, supported, of course, by Climate 200. I've got to say to you, this Climate 200 setup looks to have the fingerprints of one Malcolm Turnbull all over it. Do you know that to be true? Uh, I know it not to be true. Um, uh, Malcolm tells me he has nothing to do with this, and um, I, I, you know, there's no evidence that he's involved in it in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Many of these independents can't call themselves independents because their number one priority is to bring you people down. The Morrison government. Is, is that a statement or a question? Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> uh, look, I don't think you can call a group of people who all say the same thing who are all using the same database, who are all using the same technology and the same campaign techniques out of the United States, who are all funded by um, a person in, in the, by uh, the name of Simon Holmes Accord out of Melbourne. You can't call them independent. No. They are clearly highly coordinated group of people who are all saying the same thing and all using the same campaign techniques. Yeah. Exactly. Simon Holmes, a court, as I indicated to our listeners this morning, if you go back in time, he was close to Josh Frydenberg and Kuyong 200. He's called this Climate 200 as another dig at the Liberal Party. And he's seeking revenge. Is that a fair comment? Mate, I don't, I don't know what he's seeking. And that's part of the problem in this. They keep saying things like, um, oh, we want uh, more ambitious ta targets on climate change. Fair enough. So, so do I. So do a lot of people. But how is the question? Mm. How, how are you going to do it? And they keep the away. lights on. That, yeah, exactly. You, you, you get to 
um, David Crow uh, from the Sydney Morning Herald went to about five or six of these um, independent candidates and asked them, where do you stand on things like jobs? Where do you stand on things like housing affordability? What about national defence? I mean, it has been three months since we announced the AUKUS deal with, um, for nuclear submarines. Sally Stegall is yet to say whether she supports or opposes <sighs> that deal. So we, we don't know what they believe on every issue, on the issues they do tell us they believe stuff on, they have no plan on how to get there. And I think what Dave Sharma said uh, the other night is right. We are looking at a situation where you would be electing people who who would have um, control of the parliament, who issue by issue have refused to say what they, they stand or what they would do, and it is a recipe for chaos and dysfunction right at the time when we need clarity of purpose, clarity of vision and strength of determination in this country if we are to get through the next decade and beyond. Couldn't agree more. It's easy to say we want, we want, we want. The next question is how. How does it work? How are you going to make it happen? And everything I've heard from Zali Stegel, there's no hows, there's no explanations. It's just we want, we want. And the other thing about these, these people is we need to ask of them where will you stand when there's a hung parliament, who in a minority government will you support? Because the likelihood is there will be a minority government, Jason. Uh, look, Chris, I don't know what's going to happen at the election. That's up to the Australian people. But what I can tell you is that they will support a Labor Greens government. And the reason I say that is they already say that they are that they think the Liberal Party has gone too far to the right. Um, they are deliberately targeting members of the Liberal Party who are, you know, by their own admission, not as far right wing. So, if if they all you moderates, what they were doing. If they succeed in what they're doing, they will make the Liberal Party more right wing than than they claim it already is. So they will have no other option, by their own logic, but to support the Labor and the Green yeah. and, and the Greens Party. Now that is what they did last time they had um, the balance of power with with Rob Oatshaw and uh, Tony, Tony Windsor, who, by the way, are also advisors or on the advisory panel of Climate Two Hundred. Yep. Um, so uh, that's what they will do. And my point about all of this is. I mean, if you're a member of the Labor Party, if, if you're a Green, if you agree with them, that's fine. I mean, I disagree with your view on on politics and, go, and philosophy of governance. What I don't understand is why you are consistently trying to hide from that when you're standing for election with the Australian people. Why not just be up front and say, yes, I'm not a member of the Greens, but I agree with them and I would support them and I would uh, help them be in government if, if I got elected. Why, why all this sort of ducking and weaving? Well said. Well said. All the very best for Christmas if we don't catch up beforehand. To you too. Thank you, Chris. Good on you, mate. Jason Falinski, the member for McKellar on Sydney's northern beaches. He's right. They're not independents. Don't fall for the trap. Don't fall for the rubbish. It's fake. 25 minutes after 8, after 7 in Queensland. Eight.